there's been a lot of talk since GTA 6 was announced, with rumors flying all over. But hey, here's a rundown of confirmed stuff like vehicles, items, weapons, and features for the game. Now, the official release of the game is still a good few years away. Rockstar Games is really putting in the work to make this game top notch. But thanks to a leak, we've got some inside info. We're talking cars, new physics, main characters like Lucia and Jason, map locations, a massive open world, tons of stuff to do in game, and a bunch of weapons you'll get to use. We've also learned about better AI for non player characters, some RPG elements, and cool new gameplay features. All this has got the gaming community buzzing about what GTA 6 will bring when it finally drops. Let's dive into the primary video clips, making rounds on social platforms, showcasing mission gameplay, and offering insights into Rockstar Games' vision for GTA 6. Among the widely shared footage is a mission featuring Lucia, the game's playable character, and a Latina protagonist attempting to rob Hank's Waffles, a diner. During this early test phase, the non-player characters lack distinct facial features and bear a dummy-like appearance, humorously dubbed in-game as such. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. The NPC's responses are influenced by Lucia's aggressive actions, with various animations depicting the fear evoked by the robbery, akin to the dynamic NPC reactions seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. In the diner heist, Lucia has the option to aim her handgun at a hostage, providing players the choice to either rob or engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Managing the hostage adds depth to criminal activities in the game. Jason, the white male protagonist, is also involved in the robbery, allowing players to interact with both characters during the encounter. Jason urges Lucia to act swiftly and escape without a trace, hinting at a relationship reminiscent of Bonnie and Clyde, aligning with previous leaks regarding the game's storyline. The character's appearance bears similarities to actors Eva Mendes and Ryan Gosling from The Place Beyond the Pines, though it remains uncertain if the narrative will mirror the movie's plot. Lucia and Jason appear to be in their late twenties, and the game incorporates a character-switching mechanism seamlessly activated through the controller's D-pad. As the police arrive, Lucia can menace another hostage, leading to a showdown with law enforcement outside. The intricate design of the outdoor area suggests a setting modeled after northern Florida, characterized by lush vegetation. As Lucia and Jason make their getaway, they rack up two wanted stars but avoid a shootout, deftly maneuvering around parked cars before commandeering a police cruiser. This early mission stage is apparent with tutorial-like cues, one highlighting improvements in police AI, where law enforcement remembers vehicles linked to illegal actions. The scene wraps up with Lucia driving the police car, Jason reassuring her of their ability to shake off the cops. However, their escape comes to an abrupt halt, with an unintended collision at an outdated car wash. The early footage reveals a minimap reminiscent of Grand Theft Auto V, with icons possibly denoting missions from unfamiliar characters labeled WM and YJ. As they ascend to the VIP second floor, Dre interacts with DJ Tip, who appears irked by drink delays. A brief spat implies Tip's unpopular status. Dre moves on, and the clip ends. It's important to note that these clips depict early development stages, subject to changes throughout the game's progress. Another intriguing leak spills details on over 500 in-game events, encounters, and Easter eggs. While we can't cover them all, here are a few highlights. Various events like fishing, Satanist houses, backyard wrestling rings, and big cat mansions offer diverse experiences within the game's universe. There's talk of missing tourists, yard sales offering new clothes, an event resembling insurance fraud from Saints Row, a mysterious voice in a storm drain, potentially a nod to Pennywise, a multi-location Bonnie and Clyde mystery, and a workout challenge hinting at the return of fitness activities. Additionally, within Grand Theft Auto 6, players can stumble upon an island camp, DUI tests, UFO sightings, an animal house, a swamp safari, and the prospect of crazy golf gameplay. Based on insights gathered from the GTA forum, GTA 6's open world is estimated to be at least two and a half times larger than GTA 5, providing players with a vast and immersive environment to explore. The game draws inspiration from the successful approach seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising a meticulously crafted open world with captivating mysteries that elevate the gaming experience. GTA 6's development footage showcases recognizable real-life locations from Florida, such as the Homestead Miami Speedway, reimagined as the Port Gel Horn Racetrack, along with places like Portofino Tower, Sombrero Key Light, Solar Amphitheater Bayfront Park, and Lone Depot Park. Moreover, the inclusion of the 1,000 Museum, a high-rise residential condominium in Miami, demonstrates Rockstar's dedication to detail. A metro map mirroring Miami's real version adds to the immersive nature of the game world. The presence of lush grasslands and vegetation hints at potential expansion into Georgia. 
although this aspect remains speculative until officially confirmed. The Miami Beach Police Department's resemblance to the Vice City Neighborhood Police Station shows how Rockstar brings creativity into their world designs. Of course, with any early info, we're waiting for official confirmations to see how these elements fit into the final game. Until then, the mystery around Grand Theft Auto 6 will definitely keep fans excited for its release. Now, let's take a look at the primary locations featured in GTA 6. Ambrosia comprises Ambrosia Farms and the Tarmac. Bayside Copperhead, the Everglades, or Grass Rivers, Fairyland, and Fairyland Forest offer distinct settings. The Keys region includes East Key, Low Key, and additional spots like a garage, gas station, and liquor store. Lake Okeechobee encompasses a motel, prison, and racetrack, while Little Haiti, North Beach, and North Miami feature establishments such as gas stations, hideouts, and liquor stores. Port Gellhorn distinguishes itself with detailed spots like an abandoned building, basketball court, beach, bingo hall, bowling alley, car wash, fishing store, fruit stand, gas station, motel, pawn shop, police station, quick shop, raceway, soccer field, and more. Red Hill showcases a forest, South Beach offers a boardwalk, gym, hotel, Ocean Drive, and Park, while South Miami Sundown includes a beach and tarmac. Vice Beach encompasses Vice City suburbs and Washington Beach. Miscellaneous locations such as an abandoned hotel, observatory, fountain of youth, homeless community, Malibu Club, Monument of Leonida, Redneck Yacht Club, Spaceship House, Underwater Research Facility, and Dinosaur World enrich the gaming world. Recent leaks from this week strongly suggest that Alexandra Christina Ekavari might be the voice behind Lucia in Grand Theft Auto 6. Her voice in a demo reel closely matches the leaked clips of Lucia's dialogues, hinting at her likely portrayal of the character. Throughout this breakdown, we've covered loads of info about Grand Theft Auto 6, diving into different aspects of the game. It was important to cover everything we know about the game so far, and while we're eagerly waiting for it, it might still be a couple of years before we get our hands on it. Let's kick off by highlighting some cool discoveries from the leaked clips, focusing on new features and gameplay details revealed. In one scene, Jason and his pals are chilling by an in-ground pool in a modest neighborhood, cracking jokes about a parody of social media called Life Invader. Their banter brings in playful references to Jay Norris's demise showcasing that classic Grand Theft Auto humor fans love. Lucia and Jason are shown in animation tests doing different actions like jogging, stopping, and ducking to avoid gunfire. Rockstar's developers also tested vehicle crash physics on an overpass. The highway signs on Interstate 97 mention North Beaches and Lake Leonida, with the current exit leading to Washington Beach. In another interesting scene, Jason finds a shipping container filled with stacks of cash and a motorbike. Various development clips reveal tweaks being made to a vehicle's interior, hinting at potential new designs or customization options options for players. Throughout the clips, interactions with NPCs in the open world are demonstrated, including characters taking selfies, which adds depth to the game's environment and immersion. There's a moment where Jason enters a gang member's territory and takes cover behind a truck, showcasing unique animations for characters reacting to being shot. A notable find in the clips is a jetpack, previously leaked by Tom Henderson which is seen inside the Jack of Hearts Club. The game features parody social media logos like Snapchat, Instagram, and Life Invader. Characters also sport different hairstyles, with details like Lucia's visible bra under her shirt, adding realism. A new feature is the ability for players and NPCs to hold their guns sideways during combat, adding a different dimension to fights. Additionally, Jason is seen twirling his rifle in the air, while another character in a parking lot shoots at him with their pistol held sideways. The leaked clips also reveal early police AI testing, with NPCs showing better cover usage in shootouts. There's a scene where Jason holds up a diner worker with an assault rifle, and while there are dialogue options similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, they seem placeholder for now. Also, Jason's new ability to go prone is a fresh addition to the series. There's a scene in a thrift or antique shop that allows for robbery, potentially serving as a spot to sell stolen items, adding depth to the gameplay. Another feature borrowed from Red Dead Redemption 2 is the ability to pick up and carry bodies, which adds complexity to gameplay. Red Dead Redemption 2's influence can be seen in several other aspects of this game too. The game brings in several RPG elements, like managing food, drinks, sweat, fatigue, and even taming animals, giving players a deeper gameplay experience. References to mountain bike ramps and city bike rentals promise enjoyable cycling activities. The leaked clips mention a bunch of weapons, from firearms like pistols, shotguns, and rifles, to unusual ones like golf clubs, baseball bats, and crowbars. Players can also use equipment such as flashlights, binoculars, lockpicks, and more. 
Additionally, players can stay in motels and hotels, with the Kington Hotel being one of the options. There's even a pool party with live music for players to check out. References to the Everglades and wildlife like alligators, snakes, raccoons, and birds suggest diverse environments to explore. The weapon wheel system, similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, limits the number of weapons and items players can carry. Lucia can carry a loot bag, possibly used for robberies or stealing from different places. The inventory system allows players to carry health kits and other items for temporary boosts, and Jason can pick up and drop weapons from his inventory. The clips hint at animations like Overdose, suggesting unique actions or events in the game. There are indications of horses and horse riding mechanics, possibly inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2. The open world is full of accessible places, including motels, metro stations, restaurants, pawn shops, and supermarkets. Little details like grabbing a gumball from a quick shop machine add to the overall vibe. A cool feature is the ability to shoot while swimming, adding a new layer to combat situations. All these diverse and interesting elements together promise an immersive and fun gaming experience in Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into the cars of GTA 6. Shout out to the GTA forums for putting together this info. You can find links below to join the discussions. There's a bunch of confirmed vehicles. We're talking the Blista Compact, Ocelot Locust, and a car that looks like an early 90s Buick Skylark. Then there are some new cars without official names, like a 90s Chevy Caprice, a Chevy Malibu from 2016 onwards, a Chevy Sonic, and a Honda Accord from 2018 to 2022. And you know how Rockstar rolls, they'll give these cars their own funny names like they always do. There's more on the list too. Albany Primo, Benefactor Shafter LWB, a mix of Ford Explorer and Tahoe from the 90s or 2000s, a Toyota Rav4 from 2018 onwards, with a mix of Lexus NX style, and a Mercedes Grill, Pegasi Tauros, a 1980s Jeep CJA Scrambler, a 5th Gen F150, a G20 conversion van, a Brute Camper, Vapid Speedo, HV Mixer, Metro Mover, D-Class Sheriff SUV, Mobatsu Sanchez Livery, Nagasaki Street Blazer, a 1970s Ford Ranchero, a 1971 Buick Estate, an Albany Emperor, D-Class Turbo Saber, Yoga Classic, The Contender, and Saddler. Moreover, gamers can anticipate a range of vehicles in Grand Theft Auto 6, including the Slam Van Pickup, Bobcat XL, an updated Regina, Alpha, Gauntlet Classic, Moonbeam Helion, Boxville Go Postal, an unidentified Albany vehicle drawing inspiration from a 1959-60 Cadillac, a Rebel, an unknown Asian sedan, a Ferrazzi or Ferrochi, Baller, Novak, Buffalo STX, Alpha and Feudo, a Benson NF890, Buffalo without a sports bumper, and the Steenier and Landstalker. This extensive lineup promises an immersive and varied driving experience for players within the game. What's got you hyped about this game? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons, or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. 
Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene, though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. 
As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. This video, we're delving into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping project. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Borgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portglehorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, structures observed in leaked material from Portgorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the stockyard and crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer, signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. 
formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar Games title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font, leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mall's name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one, and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the mapping project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's Let's delve into a significant discovery. An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA V said might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway, specifically the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress, hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 1, 97. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 1, 97 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotch Grab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This to me indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing 
decreasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 4042 could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter, similar to GTA 5. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA 5, the Loop Highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possessed distinct names and numbers, even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a Loop Highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. 1. 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. 1. 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. Whether that point is a city, a smaller town, or something else, that is still unknown. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments regarding everything covered in today's video, particularly this astonishing discovery. There's substantial evidence hinting at a larger map size, but I'm eager to hear your input, so don't hesitate to leave a comment below.